This short video shows how CDA and Sustrans check the accessibility of Camden's new safer travel scheme in Camden Square. What you'll see here is some of the problems that we found in the scheme and some of the early stage recommendations uh, that Sustrans and us have come up with. It's important to understand that these are not the final or formal recommendations uh, they are yet to be made and uh, once they're made they'll be passed on to the council so about this scheme um, in February 2021 Camden asked local people what they thought about changes to reduce traffic and improve the area for pedestrians 612 people responded Camden listened to the responses and made changes to their designs in January 2022, Camden built changes to the street as a trial, and it will remain a trial until 2023. If any of you who've seen this video, uh, or who see this video, uh, want to make comments as disabled people, um, please email them in to us. If we were to like summarise in a few words the key changes that have gone on here from yeah. the talkers. If I'm right in thinking, these blocks were, traffic blocks were already there, from weren't the 70s, they, yeah. from the 1970s. That's right. Uh, so what's really changed is they've added in this one. That's right. And this one. Yeah. And they've made this cycle route through, which allows people to avoid going up Camden Road. That's quite, as, if you're cycling, yeah. Exactly. If you're cycling, yeah. Yeah. Would that be like a fair sum, summary yeah. of the changes, plus some other improvements like around here? Exactly. Mary, I'll come to you in a second. I'm just going to finish summary because Tom did a really good job at summarising this whole thing. So, you might have heard about the word a low traffic neighbourhood before. Yeah. Camden Square has now become a low traffic neighbourhood. What that means is that it, the plans have reduced the ability for cars to use it to drive through. Every house, every business in Camden Square, you can still drive to if you want to but you won't be able to use Camden Square as a shortcut to a drive, okay? And that's what a low traffic neighbour means. It means every house is still accessible by car or ambulance or fire brigade, but cars cannot, for example, cut through from the busy Camden Road. They can't use Murray Street as a shortcut to Agar Grove. That's important because Murray Street is a small residential street with a playground and a park on it. And can you remember how many cars there were per day? 4,700. 4,700 cars that weren't stopping. So they weren't living there, they weren't businesses. First we checked the floating bus stop at Royal College Street. Some of us were concerned that some disabled people might be scared of using this bus stop because of the cycle lane cutting past it. Bus stop on the Royal College Street floating bus stop. So the problems you told me is you have to cross a bike lane to get to the bus stop. You have to trust that cyclists will stop at the bus stop, uh, at the zebra crossing. It feels particularly dangerous for visually impaired people. The pavement and the cycle lane are the same level, which might make people feel more nervous. And also there seems to be a bin in the cycle lane. Some of the ideas that you had were we could maybe put another speed bump on the bike path to help sh show cyclists they have to slow down. Could we also maybe do other things to make cyclists slow down? Maybe signs, yeah. change of colour? Oh, I thought we'd said on signs, beware pedestrians. Or... We had a look at a minor crossing on Randolph Street. It has a small traffic island in the middle, which some of us didn't think was helpful for disabled people that little refuge or whatever it's called it's not the fact that there are bikes there but mm. let's say there's a car going down on the left hand side and there's a bike coming down on the right hand side mm. Eleanor is either standing or sitting in her wheelchair in a tiny little space mm -hmm. and she always, has two, she always has two support workers with her our next stop was the junction of Randolph Street and St Pancras Way 
Okay, so new signalised crossing on the junction St Pancras Way, Rudolph Street, Agarbo. New crossing that we just crossed. I'm able to use the new crossing because it has audio cones. And what does that mean? It meant that I didn't need to see that I could feel the cone moving. It told me that I could cross. Okay, so that crossing uh, meets with your approval. Yeah, let's have one for well, I thought the, it needs my bill because I could cross it alone without any help from anybody. You, you would or you wouldn't? Yeah. I could have done. Okay, thank you. So we noted that there was about 16 seconds to cross. Um, compared to other audits we've done, other checks we've done, this felt like quite a, a good amount of time. Is that fair to say? Yes. Um, but Mary, as you mentioned, this one is the crossing that only had one vibrating cone on the Randolph Street side. So as you crossed over to Agar Grove, it didn't have a cone. Uh, Jill mentioned that the countdown didn't run the whole time. It only started about six seconds to go. So there was a green person for about 10 seconds, and then it went six, five, four, three, two. So Jill mentioned that she'd like to have the number the entire time. And then also, as we cross over into Agar Grove, the pavements become narrow and slopey. I'm not sure that's how you spell it. But that means there's not too much space for a wheelchair. And if we look at the next picture, we can see the kind of narrow pavement space at Agar Grove. But generally speaking, back to the, the, the location of the crossing, the findings say there was enough time to cross. We need an extra vibrating cone and a bit more of a countdown. <laughs> Next, we look at a parallel crossing that allows pedestrians and cyclists to cross at the same time. This crossing seems to encourage cyclists to mount on the pavement and cycle there. And we thought this would cause walkers and wheelers to clash with cyclists. Um, at random house offices, there's a cycle lane and it breaks to allow pedestrians there's an actual double line break and if you look at the one here all it's saying is two-way cycle does it mean the cyclist can now go on the pavement disregarding the and going on to that one or do they have to get off well very much doubt they would get off well, and there's no indication that they should there should be double lines to say stop end of cycle lane I it didn't occur to me that that was shared space because mm. if, where Jill is standing, if you on if you move up on the about twenty yards on her left was a cycle lane mm -hmm. with a, clearly marked as a cycle lane, and then there were a couple of bollards, and it became shared space. I would read that as end of cycle lane and therefore cyclists should dismount mm. because they're on ordinary pavement then we walked up stratford villas it seemed a bit cramped there for disabled people you can see in this picture of mary you're kind of um you're walking along the pavement but there's actually a, a tree and some what looks like grass in the pavement so it's a bit of a barrier i'm thinking about anna here particularly being potentially a bit tight for space and also a confusing sign that says change priorities ahead. But some people mentioned that they weren't entirely clear what that really referred to or meant. So anything to talk about in this area here? Ensure that the paving is wheelchair accessible. I would have thought is at least a recommendation we could take forward. Ensure the pavement is wide enough with the trees being maintained, etc. Finally, we checked out Murray Street. Before this trial, Murray Street was a rat run used by 4,700 cars per day. We found it to be quiet, but we thought the signs were confusing. Now, Murray Street in this picture here, we looked at this before, didn't we? This picture used to be one road going through, and now it's become a section of road where drivers have to turn around as opposed to driving through it. So while we were there, we did notice potentially some confusion from the drivers, but also from maybe some pedestrians like ourselves about what the signs mean. Um, a positive was the area in general felt very quiet, a few of you mentioned, and it felt conveniently quiet, particularly for the children who are playing in that, um, there's a Camden play area. I, I think the signs should be more equivocal, but the 
the scheme itself seems very good. I saw enough cars slowing down, wondering what to do. And as you said, we were confused about where to cross. I'd be confused with Eleanor about, about where is the safest place to cross, given that there are no signaled crossings. There's a bit of confusion. So I think what Robert's saying, which I agree with, I think, is that make it really clear to road users, particularly people driving, how best approach this junction.